Well, hello, welcome to episode three of the White Paper Review. Um, I'm Brian Boys, which is BB. This is Gordon Graham, and he is GG. 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 Gordon, what should we know about you? Well, I, uh, for more than 20 years, I've talked about white papers to anybody who will listen, you know, and uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I'm known as that white paper me. guy. Yeah, including that's what brought Brian and I together. I'm known as that white paper guy. I've done, I've written more than 300 of these things for, for uh, all different types of companies, including some big household names like 3M and Google and Verizon and, and lots of smaller uh, companies with big ideas. And uh, I also wrote uh, the um, white papers for dummies, yeah. uh, sort of general guide to doing these things. Yeah, that's a that's a great book. And now, anyway, that was huge. That book was hugely helpful to me, as as all your other resources were. As I was learning about white papers, my name, again, I said my name is Brian Boys. I'm a I, I used to be an ad an ad agency copywriter, and for many years I've been a freelance content specialist, writing not just white papers but many other things. But my I guess the reason you might want to listen to me is I really study the structure of what, what do you need to know to write some basic white papers, and I wrote a book called how to write a white paper in one day. And there'll be, there'll be links to that below. Um, and then I've, I've written also for some clients you've probably heard of, um, companies like Pfizer and Zillow and Facebook and WebEx. And the, the whole point of Gordon and I getting together and, and doing the white paper review isn't just because he and I, we think it's, it was so great that he and I would think so much alike. We, we talked many years ago. We just found we agreed so much. And of course, it's really fun for us we're recording this and putting this out there because we hope you can learn so that you can also kind of enjoy because we're, we're going to we're going to start with um, a white paper we like and I'm going to do one that I like. But then Gordon, I heard he's got a stinker. He's got one that um, it's going to be fun to kind of beat up on. And again, just learn from the mistakes, right? Learn from the mistakes of others, right? So what I'm going to do here, let me, I'm going to, I can do this. I'm going to grab the screen. This was put out by um, AXA Health. They're, uh, they're a UK uh, private health insurer. And I don't know much about them except that I found their white paper. And um, when I was looking for really good examples, and I, I liked theirs, the more I looked at it, the more I liked it. Um, they, um, the, the title of the white paper is Embracing uh, the Multi-Generational Workplace, How Organizations Can Make the Most of, age, of an Age-Diverse Workforce. Now, what one thing I think both Gordon and I agree on is that white papers have a very good longevity. A well-written white paper is is one of your marketing pieces that can it can be effective for years if it's really well thought through. Well, this this white paper came out in 2015, so that's seven years ago. And in fact, it's based on original research they did in 2014, so that's eight years ago. And as I was reading it, I hadn't looked at the date yet. It's like, whoa, this is really relevant today because all over the, the Western world, especially there's a shortage of workers and um, they're losing, uh, you know, younger workers are leaving and then older workers are feeling like they don't belong. And if you're going to have um, a fully functioning workplace, you're going to need a multi-generational workplace. And so this, I felt like this really hits the sweet spot um, for employers and another thing that I found really impressive was, um, so, no, so number one, I'm just going to, I'm going to go, go through this. Um, number one, so they, they took on a problem that was a really top one for their clients. Now, this is a health insurance company. There's nothing in here that sells health insurance. And I'll, I'll get to why it's so awesome that they um, did not flog health insurance while they're, while they're doing the white paper. Um, it's, it's, it's. A related, it's a related area to health insurance. So it's like it's like good uh, health, it's like good workplace practices. So health and well-being. But if if your health insurer has a holistic view of your um, of your business on everything, not just we're trying to flog you. Here's the cheapest insurance at the cheapest rate. Then you're gonna you're gonna want to go to them um, as a resource. Um, the the pro what I like so they hit the the problem is sort of there in the title. It's not a, I like to scare people more. But it's it's there, and then they really do hit it in the opening. Um, they kind of start with an extended quote in the introduction here, which might might be kind of a summary. And they talk about the problem of it's it's going to be a real problem, and the the idea that you're not going to have employees, and 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 then they they telegraph that the solution is um, a mixed age workplace, but that solution has other problems of its own. And so basically, that's what this white paper is going to help you solve. Um, 
they another thing I always say about white papers is you sh it should make you want to read it. No matter if you never want to do business with the company, the the what you're going to learn is going to be so valuable that you're like, okay, I'll put in whatever it's going to take to read this one. It's this is a 21 page white paper, so I would I would put that on the long side, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's quite extensive. They do oh, it, it's probably longer than it has to be page wise because they do nice big graphics. But Brian, um, you want to show us the double page the double page spread. Oh yeah, here let's 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 go to yeah. That's a great idea. I'm gonna go to. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. So that's bigger. Yeah, so you can see how that. I'm just kind of on the fly here. Yeah, so how the how that looks um, with two, but really big graphics. So that's full page. Those are those are um, those are giant graphics, and um they the other thing is it's not just their opinion so they do offer research and and they do cite in the sources they cite other people's research but they actually did original research and that's most impressive to me yeah. that's like the gold yeah. standard for white papers yeah. and why you'd want a white paper if you're a company you've invest and that's expensive so you've invested in original research then a white paper is a great way to put that out um yeah so they cite a lot of authoritative uh sources besides just their own people and then here's a weakness we're kind of looking at the weakness right here on on the on the left here and it's that they cite in two places instead of getting a, a, a an actual authority on aging demographics they just cite their marketing director <laughs> and i'm sure he's a knowledgeable guy at everything but it just it just surely there was somebody in the company that would have more would have a title that might be a little more in keeping with demographics and workplace and I don't know. Um, that was probably the one uh, the one weakness I saw. Again, I said that they're they're very clear about what the solution is. They give it away right at the beginning, which is the um, the multi-generational workforce. And here you can see an executive summary. They just they tell you what you're what you're gonna see. And um, again, when we get to the I'm gonna zip down. I like that summary. It's quite scannable, right? With those yeah. Stars. Yeah, and look here, lots. So it's 21 pages, but some of them are, see on the left, it's a giant, and it's very informative. Like you're, oh, the sandwich generation. And what is, what's going to be hard for older workers? I mean, they really go into this and why are older and younger going to get along? It's like really, um, they list, the, they don't just list what's great. They list the problems and then they list, they list the good things about it. And then they, they'll, and then they'll list um, where, how you can, by doing this, how you can actually make your business better. And again, the thing, or sir, was this on page, oh, down on page, let me find page. Uh, so they talk about, they have some stats here on encouraging an uh, age diverse workforce. And what I really would have liked to have seen here would have been some real life examples of companies, just uh, you know, a little case study in there a mini, a mini, a couple paragraphs of case study. Okay, here's a company we talked to that has done this. It's working great, and this is why. I thought mm -hmm. that would just add, just ah, yeah. oh, man, that just would have been yeah. the thing that they needed. Yeah. Finally, at the end, and I know you're a big uh, proponent of this. They have get down to this. Um, they just make it really. Here we go. They make it really clear. You can see on the right there, um, key actions for businesses to take. Look, these are things, and they don't make it like a whole huge thing to read. Look, this is what you need to do in our, in our, uh, based on our research and what you should be doing. And then they, um, they, they also do a great job when they mention statistics or studies or whatever in the body. They, they bring them out in these really big, really easy to. Um, scan graphics so you get the picture and then it's actually it's repeated and we know how important um repetition is so finally it's not until the very very end you're like well what does this have to do with health insurance and it's pretty cool there's their sources so those are all the sources that aren't them and then you can just see over uh on the right it just said um for more advice and to find out uh, more about um you know workplace wellness and diversity and stuff we there's a um, what do they call that? An active, they have, it's called an advice hub. I love that. That's a very, that seemed a very British way of saying it. Basically you can come to us. We've got a ton of information just on running your company on, on, on enabling people in general to, to work well and your company to work well. So it's almost like a wellness, how medicine kind of now focuses on wellness as opposed to just, you know, pushing one prescription. And I love how they, their whole content, um, they have a whole content library that's 
really quite holistic. And it would make me go, wow, well, if these people know this much just about mixed age workplaces, they could really help me on my health insurance. And my, I know that my health insurance would be part of a, ho a holistic solution to make my business run better. So anyway, that is the one I liked. Well, you know what they're doing there, Brian, I think is they're really walking the walk, right? Yes. Or talking the talk. They've, they've yes. invested in, in original research. They've invested in putting out this report that doesn't have like this quick payoff for them, right? It's like building their reputation. It's positioning themselves as a trusted advisor. And that is a perfect use for this kind of report or, or a white paper. And that is content. That is content marketing. So very nice example of that. I, I was going to say one thing I, that struck my eye when you were going through was that nice use of the uh, of that blue accent color. You know, they've they've put like sometimes a single big quote mark in blue or the or the uh, heading of a of a bullet, the first line in blue. So you using that second color is really uh, not like it used to be. Ninety percent of of, of uh, white papers are read on, on screen. So in the okay, old days, it used okay. to be like, oh, we all we've got is black and white. We can't put any blue in there. That's going to cost. You know, now it doesn't cost. Get your designer to use a second accent color from your from your palette. You know, so that's their color from their their palette from their uh, from their logo, and it worked very very nicely there. Yeah, yeah, I felt it was easy to read, and and again, I think don't be afraid to space things out and have more pages. I guess we could say, um, unless you're you're you know paid by the page or trying to get some page count, but it was it's just easy on the eye. It breaks it up, and it doesn't look like it's going to be a huge amount of work to read. If we'd seen all the text condensed into like five pages of, you know, narrow, small type, I'd oh, be yeah. like, oh boy, I'll, I'll get to that later, you know? Yeah. So, so the way they did it was really good. So, okay, Gordon, I hear you've got a treat for us here. Oh, I've got a beautiful, a beautiful treat. And, uh, um, so I guess I'll get that open in there or I'll share my screen, right? Yeah. Here, take over. This is from a huge company you've probably heard of HP, right? Yes. Uh, I think their sales are around 40 billion, you know, a giant company wow. um, uh, with a very prestigious history. And here comes a, a white paper called the IT Professionals Guide to Color Imaging and Printing. So I read that and I sort of thought, oh, great, this is going to show a uh, professional's guide to color. It's going to show me how to use color, maybe like maybe like some design tips or something or why I why why I should use like all four colors or something like that because I had an HP color printer. I certainly did. And the uh, damn cartridges for the thing cost uh, <laughs> like hundreds of dollars. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, now we got their logo and then we got some small print there, but okay, this is what a color adds value to your business. Okay, I want to, and I've actually researched, I've actually tried to research this very interesting topic, um, does color increase conversions? Does color increase uh, readability? Do people respond better to color than to black and white? And you know what? Everybody sort of knows that's intuitively true. We like color. Okay. But I can find, I went to Toronto's Metro Reference Library, the biggest library in this country. Uh, I could find zero journals, articles, research about color in marketing wow, wow. everyone just and there was a there was a a pointer to something from the 40s and it was just a, a comment by this guy this psychologist i i think i'm getting this right and then everybody else just pointed back around in circles to each other saying like color build sales color help sales color help sales so i'm interested in this topic when i first got this i thought oh maybe they'll have some research in here about color and uh, that it's actually worth doing stuff in color and, and people respond better. Well, let's see. Oh, um, um, oh my gosh. That's, uh, maybe I'll, I'll just go on the next page. Oh, uh, oh, and then it's over. That That's it. Wow. Oh, wait, wait a second here. It's a guide to color imaging and printing. Um, uh, color adds value to your business. IT professionals supporting today's small and mid-sized businesses continue to face many tough challenges. Okay, sure. As they are tasked with providing the right infrastructure capabilities to support their businesses, both manageably and affordably. Um, 
You know, that can be talking about anything, any industry. <laughs> yeah, really. It's pretty generic. It's pretty generic. Pretty so generic. There's, a, there's kind of like this, you see these first three paragraphs yeah. of kind of generic stuff. Well, how should IT professionals plan to address these increasing needs for color? Um, oh, well, here's good. We need reliable speed and quality. It has to be manageable. It has to be portable. Oh, well, I'm, are they telling me anything I don't know? I'm an IT professional. Like, oh, the HP solutions deliver. Uh, so oh. after two thirds of a page I of generalities, I hit 20 years of investment in ink and laser technology. HP is uniquely positioned to offer the most complete family. Of, what? Oh, no. This is a brochure. This oh, is a brochure. Shoot. And, and look at all the bold. From here on, all the bold is na names of of their products. Oh, my gosh. Like The thing that grabs your eye is the names of the products. And they're talking about using color. And there isn't a picture in here. <laughs> there isn't a, a color picture in here. HP helps you manage your color assets. Total cost of ownership is key. What? What are they telling me that I don't already know? Oh, so, oh you know, I've, I've got, um, uh, Brian and I are in the process of putting together our, our uh, list of the seven deadly sins. And up to now, I've been using the 10, the 10 uh, worst things you could do in a white paper. So let's see, let's see how many of the 10 on my list this, this uh, okay. um, uh, fits. So boring or misleading title. Well, see, I was interested in the title, but it definitely doesn't match the content, right? Yeah, I, I get. Yeah, guide to color printing. I, there's, I'm not learning a single thing in there. So uh, check. It's a misleading title. Yeah. Too long or too short? I'd say that's pretty short. You know. Um, so I'm gonna give it too short. Uh, poor design. Well, I, I, I rest my case. What, what do you call this kind of design? I have a name for this uh, wall of gray. You know, it's, it's something. I, I would, I would argue it doesn't have a design. It, to me, it looks like right before it somehow it got uh, hijacked right before it went to the designer. And oops, we just, we just, uh oh, we, we sent you the it wrong up. file. Yes, we just put the well up. Oh, sorry, we already released it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like something that was cranked out from uh, Microsoft Word. Eh? And look yeah. how long. Look how long, how wide the lines are, right? Like they're a type. So I've actually done professional typesetting, right? I, okay. I've set type, and the uh, you, you, the the ideal is to keep the horizontal line somewhere where you can I can go back and forth kind of easily. So 60, 70, 80 characters is okay. I think I counted this up one time, and it's 120 characters or something Whoa. wide. Like it, it's 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 really hard Whoa. to even read. And then is there any white space between the paragraphs? No, but um, um my my number four is uh okay. missing or poor graphics uh check even on the cover would it have killed them to put a picture of one of hp's fancy printers on here no we can't do that you know this is a white paper well um, isn't that the flag of norway i don't even know if that doesn't even look like it's their logo on the... no i think they had that logo for a while oh, okay yeah. okay okay uh, it's, it's it's very big the one down in the corner is the one maybe we're more used okay to. okay um too much hype and too little proof. Oh, man. Uh, check. I don't see any independent sources. I don't see any experts. I see a lot of generalities. And then uh, and then this paper's job is to get out there and sell, sell, sell. You know? um, uh, oh, sales pitch in disguise. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's too well disguised. No. This is a sales pitch. You know, no. it's even even the second, even the second um, or the or the first sub hit here. Call, Color adds value to your business. Even that, they're mentioning HP, like in the third sentence. And you know what? I did a search through this. Okay. The, the, the term HP, the name of the company HP is mentioned over 90 times in this little document. In, in, 90, in four, I, I would say that's times. three and a half that's pages. Three and a half pages of text because the cover doesn't count. Yeah. So that's, it's 30 times per page. That's almost that's probably once every two oh lines. Oh my gosh! They mentioned HP, so uh, that is a sales pitch. That's like somebody won a bet. You, I bet you, I can get I can get HP in here more than ninety <laughs> times. You're on, you're on, bud. All right. <laughs> I bet you can't do a hundred. <laughs> and um, you know, weak flow of ideas. Yeah. Uh, there are no ideas here. There, yeah. there, there. See these three requirements? They're just thrown in there. Yeah. And is there any table showing how these other printers measure up on all these three requirements? No. Is there any connection between the first paragraph 
the second and and the list of products and no and uh unprofessional writing well i would say remember that first sentence i read uh tasked with providing the right infrastructure capabilities to support their businesses both manageably and affordably um that could have used a, a copy edit you know absolutely yeah. absolutely for sure yeah. a couple of the other things that i so it, it checked off the first eight on my list it checked <laughs> off the first eight no problem at all and so i uh, I also say it should have some kind of summary at the start and some kind of call to action at the end. I'll give it a pass on those two because I suppose you could read between the lines and say, okay, they, they, they tried to do some kind of introduction at the start and they and right at the very last sentence for more information on color imaging and printing solutions, visit hp.com slash go slash color. So they, they have yeah. call to action, I suppose, but I'm giving this eight out of 10. And I have to say, it's not aggressively hard on the eyes, but it is a steaming pile of, <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, you know what it reminds me of? Well, two things, I have two reactions, quick takes. Are you done, Gordon? I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt your 10. No, go we, ahead. We go done. ahead. So my, my, first, my first take was, it, it reminds me of the kind of thing that you would, um, not read like if you got a printer you know all that paper you throw away because the, the four things oh, you need yeah. to know are on a sticker on the printer so it looked yeah. it reminds me of that all that sand i'm not gonna how i might electrocute myself you know it it totally it totally un, 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 unengaging graphically or, or writing wise secondly so i'm a i'm a business and i'm thinking it's between hp and epson and i don't know name somebody else for my color for my color and we're gonna buy it but we're gonna go all in well, I got this from HP. You can imagine from Epson and Canon, it's not going to look like it's going to be. It's going to blow us away. It's going to. It's going to be that. Have some, have some pictures in it, maybe. Eh? It's going to have some research on color. Why are we even doing color? I don't know. Maybe we don't need color. You know, it's it's it, when you. The funny thing is, is, as you opened it to two, I thought I thought I was missing. Like at the top, we so want a headline or some bold, like a summary, something yeah. to get us into it. Yeah. That and you can tell they weren't. If, if it had scooted everything down, so what? They had room. They had room on the fourth page for yeah, look at this. Do this they right. had room for a picture. Yes. For most of a or a yes. couple of pictures that would have broken it up quite. Fine. And to shorten the, the line length and wow, that's again yeah, HP not, is a great. I know people that work there, and we've seen HP things that are very well done. And it's just it shows that big companies can stumble. Basically, I think that's a good example of that too. I think that that is the lesson that, that we can put out with these bad examples of white papers is that even a giant company with tons of resources, with uh, uh, huge marketing staffs, they can they can uh, really do crap content. And a smaller company, a medium sized company that has a clue uh, and is creative uh, can outdo them can really outdo them. And, and you, you named Epson and Canon. They're both, they're both um, much smaller uh, companies than HP, but I bet you anything their white papers uh, for their color products were, were far superior. So yeah, like, yeah. You know, get a clue people. Get a yeah. clue. And another thing I think is, and hopefully you're getting this, this is our, our third episode and you're seeing both the good and the bad. You don't have to be a genius to see either what's good or what's a problem. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, we're not, we're, we didn't have to get PhDs in white papers to, to and it's, it's so obvious. Uh, the fruit is so low hanging to produce a decent white paper. It's really not that hard, is it? No, no. Well, well, listen, here's, here's my list. Have a, have an interesting and accurate title. Uh, don't make it too long or too short. Uh, have some good design and typography. <laughs> Put in some pictures. Uh, don't base it all on hype. Have some evidence and some proof. Don't make it a sales pitch. Connect your ideas with some kind of logic. Uh, write it up or get an editor to polish it up. Uh, give us an introduction at the start and, uh, and what to do at the end if we're super excited. Like, to me, those are such common sense things, uh, you know, and, they're, and they, they don't cost money. Like, graphics. But sometimes people used to say we have no budget for graphics. That that is so ridiculous. Now I buy stock photos for like three dollars. Yes. And you can you once you buy them. There's the even free stuff. ones that are really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. 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 So, yeah. And you and, and the yeah. licenses now you buy them, 
and I, I always I, I always say like, OK, I'm doing another project. I'd like to use that. Do I need to buy the picture again? They're like, no, you did. You paid us for three bucks. You can use it the rest of your Get life. Get the royalty oh, free. God. Use it the rest of your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's totally. And so it shows that with a little bit of knowledge and a willingness, tiny companies, a one person operation can produce white papers that are better than many. I'm serious. Better than 95 percent of what we see. Gordon and I, at least my experience. I have to do a lot of looking to find ones that I really like and say, okay, I think this is a really good example of really all the, I have kind of seven points and we're, anyway, we're, Gordon and I, we're going to merge them into the ultimate list of, of whatever, but it's, it's hard for me to find ones that I can get really excited about. So it, it's, it's really there for the taking to do, to write decent white papers. It's not that hard. I, I, I agree. And that's why I, I went into them in the first place. I was working as a journalist okay. and I would get um, back in the nineties and I would get these white papers sent to me. I was a computer journalist, right? And these companies would send me these white papers and I'd be like, you know, it would have been better for them to not show me this than to show me this mess you know, that somebody with zero clue did. And this was before content marketing. They were just trying to describe their technology. Right. And, you know, they, that's where I got my list of these things. No pictures, no introduction, obviously written by some programmer who just jumped in and started madly typing without any plan or structure or anything like content has come. A good content has come a long way. And uh, but I agree that the average white paper today is pretty ho-hum. You know, I, I, I used to say 50% of them were pretty bad. Maybe it's down to 40%, you know. Now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's even down to 33 and a third percent. <laughs> there I say that, you know, but that that's a lot of money being being thrown out uh, by making these dumb, these dumb kind of you right, know, right. Kind of things, you know. And I would say, and that's just the bar of embarrassment. I would say above and beyond to say, wow, this is really convincing. This is something I would take to a meeting and say, guys, look, let me share with you what I've learned. That, that's still a very tiny percentage. It's just not, it's, it's, it's the potential of a white paper, but it's just, it's, it's amazing how it's not, it's just not done much. So. And, and when you get a good one, it'll, that hits it out of the park. Believe you me. I mean, I've seen the surveys about this. People send them around. They send yes. them around to their colleagues. They send them around to their peers and other companies. You know, the pass along rate is fabulous if somebody does a good job on one of these things. So you can't, they, they can go, you know, sort of viral if they're, if they're really good. because Absolutely. It is people, fair. they love, we all love to be the source of, great, of good information. We all love to have that tip that makes us look smart. Your really good white paper can do that for people, you know, kind of keep that in mind. So anyway, oh man. Okay. Well, right, Gordon, we got to, we got to wrap this up. I love talking to you so much. This is actually, people think white papers are boring, but they're actually a lot of fun. I hope as, oh, as we've shown, I've, you know, I've never found them boring. I've at never least talking about them. them. You know, um, because they're like little, it, it, I came out of the publishing industry, you know, and like each white paper is like a little book yes, or a yeah. little magazine, you know, yeah. it's a little standalone piece that, uh, that can go out in the world and really do a lot, or it can go out in the world and fall flat, you know, so. Exactly, exactly. And so my, my guess is for you, you, one person that's, uh, that watching this, hopefully at least one person's watching this. You, my guess is that you've got an interest in white papers. And so maybe you just want to learn more about white papers. Maybe you need to um, write a white paper. You need like right away. Some, some resources are going to help you get going right away because you have one too. Maybe you, you've got a really big white paper project and you need to hire um, uh, an expert white paper writer for a lot of money and have them write it for you. Look in the links uh, just down below this video. We've got we've got links to everything. Um, Gordon and I we both we both have resources that you can uh, take advantage of to help you going. Again, um, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell because we're going to keep doing more of these. I hope, right, Gordon? Oh, I, I hope this is fun. We're having we're having. You can find any good I, we have too much to talk fun. about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you, Gordon, and we will uh, see you guys next time. Thank you, BB. Bye bye.